what is up guys and welcome to episode eight of my stream how are you all doing today i have fixed my chat so chat away guys i'll be able to see um come join me on twitch help a, help a guy out help me get my average views up um so today i've got morgan coming on he'll be on shortly um so you've just got me for now um so I'm going to start off with a review, um, and then we'll go from there. Um, so the, the review is from a band called After the Abduction from Manchester. So let's get straight into it. For sure. That's the uh, guy who helped blow to the door now, Chris's band. Yeah. He's a vocalist. He's got just released a new album. Um, obviously, with all the uh, stuff going on, they can't tour and stuff, so. They need the, all the sport they can get, guys, so that's why I'm playing him, and I, I really love the guys, and great live band as well. This is definitely some angry sort of uh, gym music, workout music for you guys. No compromise, brutality. What's up, GB? How you doing, bro? Talk to your mother with that mouth, Chris. Well, that was quite the uh, quite the tune. If you want to check more out from these guys, short and sweet, I know, but after the abduction UK on Facebook, what a killer, what a killer bit of brutality. So yeah, I mean, uh, I love the song. Definitely this kind of stuff I'd listen to if I'm, you know, feeling in the mood for some angry riffs. There's no no melody at all in there. You know, they're quite a technical band and they're quite different, actually, across the album. So definitely a band that's worth checking out. Also, like I said, really cool guys. Uh, Chris, the vocalist, really helps Bloodshot. So thank you, Chris. Love you, bro. Um, just going to let you see that link again for a minute whilst I talk. Um, yeah, I saw these guys live recently and, uh, well, kind of recently in, in the last year and they were absolutely savage. The drama blew me away. Um, so definitely a band that needs checking out. They need, they need all the attention they can. Um, they worked really hard on this record, so go check them out. So yeah, guys, um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff lined up for today. I'm going to play you a couple of songs. Um, hopefully well. We'll see how that goes. Um, I, want, I want to encourage you guys to come over to Twitch. And also, no matter what platform you're on, just chat to me. Ask me questions. Um, I've got time to kill. So just feel free to ask me anything and I'll happily indulge you um, as best I can. Um, so... Yeah, I'm gonna. After that brutality, I really wanna wanna play some riffs. So I'm just gonna tune up a bit for you guys. So yeah, um, this week uh, on Friday is my birthday, and I'll be streaming. Um, I'm gonna be showing. I'm going to be showing and playing some uh, material from my new solo project, Forlorn World, which the logo's up in the corner there, above, above my character. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. I've also got Nick from Equipoise coming on, and he's going to chat with me about 
all things music with his band so that's going to be really great i'm going to be doing another cooking segment i have um i have worked out how i'm gonna cook cook for you guys live um that's an in- going to be an interesting uh interesting journey so we'll see how that goes um but i'll be doing that probably in a few weeks from now um so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna play you consequence complex from demons and um yeah just get chatting guys and interact help me out come on twitch subscribe if you can if you've got amazon prime you can subscribe for free and that will help me out. I'll get paid and you don't have to pay a penny. <laughs> Let's see if uh, see if I can get any follows with this song. that was consequence complex from the demons album so yeah how did it sound guys let me know let me know how it sounds and stuff it's always it's always worrying on the stream that i'm like playing and it sounds good to me and it sucks for everyone else
But yeah, so, so oh, my headphones slipping off. So what show? What's up, John? Thanks, buddy. What show for for Demons was that? Was that the uh, the headline tour? Yeah, thanks all for tuning in, guys. It's awesome to uh, it's awesome to see you all here. What's up, Ross? Long time, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're keeping well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I want to try something different, actually, guys. Um, someone give me fire some recommendations at me for something I should check out on YouTube right now and react to instead of me just like pre-picking everything oh, that, that is some tour lineup set privation over off and bloodshot that's that's something else right there that's uh, <laughs> that's a messy weekend it's good to hear Ross Hopefully I'll see you soon on the road, buddy. Stay safe. Um, but yeah, fire something at me, guys. Otherwise, I'm just going to put... Just pick something. Um, it doesn't have to be metal either. It can be anything. I mean, ideally it would be metal. Because uh, that's the main viewership, really. And that's my target audience. Um, but it can be anything. It can be something different. Fire ideas at me, guys. Go on. Don't keep me waiting. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be playing some more songs. Me and Morgan will be getting into... Uh, uh, not in full, no. I haven't checked out the... Uh, yeah, it definitely is, Ross. I haven't checked out any of the new Black Dahlia Murder. Maybe the single. Skid Row at Wembley. Um, so maybe, yeah, I'll, I'll check out, how about that? I'll, I'll check out, uh, check out the new, new Black Dahlia. Why not? So let me just find a song. The single is called Ve Venomous, right? I mean, the full album's up on the, uh. Let's let's well, let's watch the music video. Yeah, I may as I may as well check it out, huh? Um, this is gonna look crazy for a second, but bear with me, my friends. Ah, screenception. Alrighty, let's quickly get into this. I'm going to play Child of the Night, because that is typical get adverts. Skip the ads. Alright, let's go. Let's get into this. I really, 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 really love Brandon Ellis. I know probably everyone does, and it goes without saying, but the guy is a shred monster. And he's so young. Already sounds pretty cool. I'll be honest with you guys, like, uh, Black Dahlia is not a band I'm super into. Um, my best friend, Ollie, is, loves this band so much. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's jealousy. Because <laughs> they're sick. I don't know. I mean, the production is like top level. I believe these guys are like billboarded in the top 10 in America, which is absolutely insane for any death metal act, so. Really, they're shining the light. Helping bands like Watch you know, get more recognition, I guess. How mad would it be if, you know, our music became commercial? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. But well, maybe not, actually. Not in the music scene. Yeah, I mean, it sounds really tight. Amazing production. 
I can see why they're super popular, you know, regardless of my own taste. What do you guys think? You guys listen to the full album? Let me know. And, uh, tell me if I should give it. Should just listen to the full album. The video's cool as well. It's like quite grim, so I like. Kind of lighting. Stop teasing me with shots of Brandon. Just give me a solo already. God dang. There we go. I mean, this guy, like, you can hear him as soon as he starts, like, bending a note. What a G. What I'm wondering is when Brandon's going to release a solo album. That will definitely have some stuff. Space is probably quite busy with Black Dahlia. Yeah, they release albums quite regularly. Definitely a band to look up to, guys. If you if you really want to, you know, work hard and stuff, they're the benchmark. The Relentless band. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that song was absolutely killer. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love Arsis Ross and uh, yeah, he was a really, really great guitar player. I'm, I think he's still in Arsis, is he not? Yeah, it's like a stepping stone into the Black Dahlia murder. <laughs> album for album of the year so far. Well, that's good. What about my album, John? You've had to listen to that. <laughs> he filled in for Silosis. Interesting. I'm pretty sure he was in Cannabis Corpse as well. At one point. He may still be. But yeah, I mean, I think he's like 25 years old. He's got a massive career ahead of him. I'd be surprised if he wasn't playing for someone, you know, filling someone who fills stadium or uh, not stadiums, uh, arena gigs at some point. John over here is a bit of a stalker of uh, old Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I watch him whilst he sleeps. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, um, yeah, really cool. Great, great sounding band. Obviously, uh, I've listened to them before. The album sounds killer. They're kind of, uh, you know what you're going to get with them. What's up, Juan? <laughs> he just said his own name. It's good to see that um, the chat integration's working. Hey, buddy. Come on over to Twitch my friend and help me out with views on there if you can twitch.tv slash josh mcmoran um so yeah is there, anyone got any questions like it can be related to the new bloodshot material if you would if if, if if you're that way inclined or anything really um because i'm just chilling for the moment morgan will be here soon oh, oh we do have uh we have another lesson video for you guys today for uh, the second track of Reanimation. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to play a song from Reanimation. Uh, maybe maybe I'll jam that out in a minute, actually. Um, 
I could I could jam a few songs really if if I don't know is, is it, what do you guys want to see you guys want to see me play some music or do you want to chat for a bit what do you want to do speak to me this is an interactive show today so I've finally got the chat working so I want to you know I want to try and include you guys the best I can <laughs> like I say we do have uh, still play stuff <laughs> um, I don't know I mean. Guitar's tuned a bit different now. So, I mean. <laughs> oh, that's from even more. That's Coalition of Terror. Slaves to the Lie. Um, that was on seven string. But yeah, I probably could. If I, um, like, let me try and think of a, I can think of a riff right now. There you go. There's, that's from the demon that makes trophy of man. <laughs> Shackled. Well, lucky for you, my friend, I actually have that plan. So as you requested it, I'm going to just play it now. Sorry for all the noise. Uh, yeah, if you're enjoying what you're seeing on YouTube, guys, come over to Twitch and uh, sign up. You can really help me out. What's up, Diego from Bolivia? How you doing, m my friend? I hope you're I hope you're enjoying your lockdown time the best you can, everyone. And uh, I'm here to give you some uh, light entertainment, I guess. I've got like a bunch more shows going on, guys. Just so you know, this will be going on for the next couple of months. So if you like what you see, please come over and support me on Twitch because. I actually get paid for people watching it on Twitch. At, at the moment, not much, but, you know, it, every little helps. Um, I, I, I am investing into the stream to make it as good as possible. So, uh, but I appreciate the support on all platforms, guys, and I'm glad I'm just able to, to interact with you all at the same time now. It's really, really satisfying. <laughs> because this streaming stuff is actually more complicated than just setting up a camera i will say that okay but i'm gonna yeah so i'm gonna play a song i'm gonna play shackled from reanimation guys um enjoy probably gonna fuck up at the start
Alrighty, guys, that was Shackled from the album Reanimation. Thanks, everyone, so much for tuning in. What's up? Hi in Brazil. We're waiting for you to come. We want to come, of course. Of course we want to come to Brazil. It would be absolutely amazing. Um, as soon as possible, really. You know, we, we're, we're not going anywhere. So it's when... The promoters are ready, I'd say, is, is the best answer for you because we're going to be around for a long, long time. Guys, if, you, if, you're, enjoying, if you're enjoying this and you uh, like what you're hearing, you can check out our official merch store. I do ship worldwide, but um, I understand that it can be quite expensive to do so. But yeah, guys, um, uh, uh, Bunker Bake, hiya, I'll be cooking two weeks from Friday, um, what's up Mauricio, thank you for the round of applause, appreciate that, um, guys, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, please come over to Twitch, Twitch TV twitch.tv slash josh mcmoran come watch me on here um you could it really helps me out yeah i mean we 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 tour the uk as much as we can so we're always looking to play last time we played corp in sheffield we actually got pulled off stage because the the people in the venue weren't ready for us they just were really unprofessional so um that really sucked because we were opening for Decapitated. And we were set up and we were in front of all the crowd and stuff. And I was there like ready to go like, come on, we're going to open for De Decapitated. And then uh, they were like, yeah, you can't play. There's no time. We don't know what we're doing. And we, I mean, I've, I was like, I was irate to say the least. But yeah, I mean, we've really wanted to try and get back to Sheffield, but... I don't know, it seems to be, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry for that, man. But, I mean, um, we'll try and get back to Sheffield. We played Leeds a few times. Leeds seems to, like, be more accepting of, of us. Um, but I understand that that's not exactly Sheffield. Um, but, yeah, sorry, man, sorry about that. That was, like, one of the worst days of my musical career, honestly. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it's like. I'm not gonna cry about it, but it was just. It was. Just, it was just sad because I, I knew that there were people that wanted to see us. You know, like if no one was there to see us, then it would have been no skin off my back. But you know, I had people coming up to me and asking me questions and stuff like that about why we weren't playing. And it was just like, believe me, I want to be. <laughs> What's up, Jack? But yeah. Come, come hit me up on Twitch, guys. If you're on YouTube, you can be on Twitch and you can help me out, make my stream stronger, give me more views. Um, yeah, just to let you know, my good buddy Jack actually has a YouTube, new YouTube page for his production work. So I'm going to just I'm gonna have a quick, quick little gander at that. Why not? See ya. Uh, see, see a little video of that maybe. Giacomo is um, a budding, a budding uh, audio engineer. He's he's ha actually helped me a lot with my. Uh, there you go, Jake on audio. I haven't subscribed yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just subscribe. You guys can do that. All you have to do is be logged in, and you can click straight on the button like I just did. Um, bit embarrassing that I didn't subscribe. Sorry, buddy. I was going to get around to it, and obviously I've just done it now. Jack actually released this video quite recently. It's not it's not exactly metal, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. So let's just uh, let's just check them out, shall we? Ooh. Sorry about that lag. He looks like an Italian fighter pilot. 
from the from the 80s. I imagine this is what he'd be listening to if he was flying a plane as well. So Giacomo helped me out with my uh, new new uh, solo album. He re recorded all the bass for me. Did an absolutely impeccable job of it. I'm really happy with it. How fun is that? Yeah, I'm really happy with his work. So if you need any uh, bass advice or anything, he's gonna have all this stuff coming on his channel. Jack's one of the most passionate bass players and passionate people about audio engineering that I've ever met, honestly. Like, if you want to have a fight with Jack, mate, all you gotta do is tell him his bass tone is bad and he will destroy you. But yeah, he produced this as well as playing. So this is some of his work. I know mean, metal isn't necessarily what. Uh, this isn't necessarily metal, but it all goes hand in hand, you know. I actually gave Jack a bass solo on the album, the solo album, so. I'll be playing some of that for you guys on Friday on my birthday, so. If you want to come and hang out with me on my birthday, you can hear some of my new music. It could be a bit of an exclusive, so I played it here and there, but. These are some of his uh, endorsers. Thank you for making it, Jack. So yeah, what, what do you guys think of that that funky feel good tune? Nice little remix. So yeah, demons would be nice to hear. Um, I, I played a song of Demons earlier, but maybe I can play some more at some point or something. I don't know. The world is my oyster, I guess. I can do whatever I want. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So go check out Giacomo. Jake on audio. On, um, you can check find him on all social medias. Um, he, he is a bass master for tone and stuff. So you can really learn something from him. Um, and he's put out a lot of good, good stuff. So go check it out. Play unified twice as fast. I actually, uh, I actually tried to play it earlier, and um, I was like, "Nah, this is going to take a bit more practice before I stream that." <laughs> so, um, but yeah, hope everyone's having a good time. Anyone got any, uh, anyone got any questions for me? Fire some questions at me, guys. Come over, come over to um, come over to Twitch if you're on Facebook. I know I'm like a broken record, and I keep saying that, but everyone on Twitch that's watching me is supporting me. And if you follow me, great. If you subscribe to me, even better. You know, um, I'm going to reinvest any money that I do make back into the stream to make it awesome for you guys. Um, and I'm I'm trying to learn, you know, how I can make it better. Um, and that, that obviously comes with good feedback. Am I going to get drunk on my birthday? Uh, well, I don't really drink that often. And honestly, I'm, I don't like my own company as it is. So a drunk me is, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, John, you should, you should get drunk for me. You should be my, maybe we should get you on the stream. Just have you like in the corner. Like a, a drunk John Cam, and you can be my drunken spirit animal for my birthday. 
Um, I will be eating a lot of food and hopefully opening lots of presents. The uh, the intro to Survival Evolved. The um, it's actually Morgan's Morgan's part, but I'm sure I can work it out real quick. Well, Morgan will be on actually shortly, so we can we can we can make a video out of all that stuff. Uh, we we actually have a I actually have a little video of his, but I'm, I'm saving it for when he arrives, so we can you know have him sit down and and relax instead of just being like, right, just stay straight on screen, bro. Hmm, takeaway. I feel like a, a nice Indian. That would be delicious. Thanks, my love. Um, so yeah, uh, let's talk about the world, I guess, for a little second. I don't want to get too depressing, but um, I hope everyone is staying safe. Um, obviously, there's different guidance for each country's... Uh, in the UK, a lot of people are going out and stuff, but I really... For me, it's not advisable. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but this country is an absolute farce, and I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty worried, honestly, for uh, just getting back into playing shows and stuff. I feel like it's going to take longer and longer just because more people are just going out in the worst times, and, you know, it's not helping stuff overall. Yeah, exactly. Too soon, you know, and it's just gonna it's just going to prolong the agony is the best way of putting it so i mean i'm not going to preach and tell you what's up ian ian is an incredible guitar player thank you for liking following me my friend um yeah i mean fingers crossed that it isn't it, it doesn't come hit us too hard um but i mean all the countries are doing different things and Seems to be different results across the board, you know. What's up, Eddie? Well, no, I mean, that's good to hear, man. I mean, there really shouldn't be any rush, you know, because... Yeah, I'm doing great, buddy. Um, a little bit stir-crazy, but I'm just, I'm just pleased to be safe and be in control of what I'm doing, you know. Not making using any excuse to go out and break rules um but yeah i mean f f what do you guys think like it's interesting i it, for me it's really interesting to know what it's like in other countries so like for example eddie here just said in boston that he doesn't feel like it's gonna open anytime soon and uh for me like i was just saying that's that's a good thing you know we, we shouldn't be in any rush shouldn't be in any rush to to move forward with these things you know because just the more precaution you take the better the better the results like uh just an example is my brother my oldest brother what's up jesse i'll answer that in a second and i'll, I'll plug in my guitar with blackhawks so you can hear for yourself um but yeah so as i was saying my brother's from shanghai and obviously china is where the outbreak began but you know they've managed to reopen up there so you know they haven't had any new cases in 18 days and i feel like that's because they they really you know they really were prepared to deal with it and you know if people were suspected of being ill then they were quarantined you know no questions asked so my point of the, of the whole thing is is that just try and think for yourselves guys because the government are confusing everyone you know they're, they're giving mixed they don't want to they're trying to like they don't want to give too much responsibility away you know they don't want to accept too much responsibility so they're putting it in our hands so my, my my suggestion is just stay safe do it for your loved ones especially you know you're at risk family because 
it's really important, you know. Uh, not much, Aaron. I played a few songs, buddy. Where are we? We are... We're just talking about... Just talking about coronavirus. Um, and how different... I'm trying to ask everyone how different... Uh, different governments are dealing with it. Like, for example, here it's it's got a bit looser. Like, people are on the roads. The roads are really busy in the UK and stuff. Um, but in Boston, they seem pretty, you know, seems like it's not, not opening up, which is how it should be. Um, obviously, you know, the government are doing their best. I'm not here to criticize them and stuff like that. My point is I just want everyone to be super safe and, you know, do your own think for yourself you know safety first you know just because just because someone's telling you it's okay to go outside doesn't necessarily mean it is um and yeah we all want to you know if, speaking from musicians we all want to get out there and tour as quickly as possible uh we're, we're the first we're the first industry that got shut down right and we're going to be the last industry that comes back back up um and I don't want to stress this too much. I like it's fine, you know. We can all try and get jobs, like normal jobs. But everyone who's just been fired is trying to get those jobs as well, you know. So it's like, I don't know. It's a difficult situation, but hopefully we can just open things up sooner rather than later, you know. And that that's going to take discipline from the people, regardless of what the the governments are imposing. But yeah, anyway, let's um, let's move on from all all that horrid stuff. Um, I might just Yo. oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Did I scare you? Sorry. Uh, a little bit actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to message you, man. Hey, what's up? Not much, buddy. How you doing? Good, good. I'm all souped up, literally. Nice. Have a nice meal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, bud. Just chilling. I'm trying to bring uh, good vibes. You scared, you scared John, apparently. <laughs> 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 that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yes. That's how we should introduce you every time. It's like, <sighs> Yeah. Oh, oh. Ooh, big, big long message from Aaron. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, the, 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 this is why we're doing it, Aaron. We we are uh, we're trying to trying to bring what we can to the people as we can. You know, we, me and Morgan are both entertainers. We we love what we do. So, you know, why not try and help people out in the time of need? <laughs> John, where did that come from? <laughs> sorry if anyone had a heart attack from that. Um, not sorry, actually. But yeah, I, we're, we're gonna we're gonna f just launch into your your lesson there, Morgan, and I'm gonna I'm gonna duck out for a minute, and then I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading the chat. But yeah, don't, doesn't doesn't Morgan look pretty today as well? Like we we've really perfected the camera look, and he's he's looking very he looks delightful. That Discord quality. Ah, oh, nice. Glad to hear, Eddie. Thanks for tuning in, man. Um, we're just about to, after this, after this little lesson video from Morgan, uh, lick of the week too. Oh God, the budget version. Prepare yourselves. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get into some more Canada talk. We, we ended it in Ontario, on the way to Winnipeg. So uh, that journey in itself, that 36-hour journey between shows was uh, full of stories. So anyway, yeah, so check this out, guys. This is a little shred lick from Graviton Nightmare, track two of Reanimation. Speak to you guys soon. That is the wrong. Jaquan, Jaquan. Yeah. Jaquan is a rapper. Week of the week number two. Go. You don't have much time. They're coming.
a running riff. All right, hi everybody. Doing a lick thing. All right, teach you a lick. Um, this is from the track, the second track on the album, uh, Graviton Nightmare. And this is the second lick of the week. Um, yeah, this is a cool little, this is the Harry Potter section. Um, yeah, there's some cool kind of neoclassical chords going on. I don't know any of them, and I'm not going to pretend I do. But I play some cool stuff over it, and so can you. You slide into the ninth fret on the D string. And we do a little, um, a little interesting extended sweep thing, but it's kind of slow. I actually start that with an upstroke, so it's an upstroke on the 8th fret of the A, then two downstrokes in a row, and that is on the D string and G string, and that's the 6th fret. And uh, then I pick with an upstroke and then a downstroke on the 10th fret and the 11th fret, respectively. Uh, and yeah, so it starts off like this. You're sliding in. Want some nice tasty vibrato? You don't want to get Corona, so you better have good vibrato. So after that little, uh, sweep thing, you're gonna slide into that 10th fret. Hammer onto the 11th fret, and then pull off to the 10th fret, and then pull off to the 9th fret. Yeah. Then, um, just a couple little notes here, and that's the 8th fret and the 9th fret on the D, then the 8th fret and the 9th fret on the G. But just... Then, we're going to play the 11th fret on the B, pull off to the uh, 7th fret, that's kind of like... It's a bit uh, fusion-y. And we're going to play that uh, ninth fret on the B. I'm just doing this now. I'm not exactly 100% sure if that's what I do on the record, but but you have a little chicka cha like a chicka cha and you slide into that uh, ninth fret. And then you play the 11th fret, 12th fret, and you play the 11th fret, and you band it into the 12th fret. And you can do a little trill thingy. So after you bend down, you're going to play the 12th fret with a hammer on, pull off to the 11, pull off to the 9. And then you're going to immediately pick that 11th uh, fret back and then give it some nice tasty vibrato. And that one is... And what I mean by that is that uh, you're going to be bending up and down a half step. Um, but it's a bit slower, so you hear it uh, quite apparent. It's almost more like a bend more than an actual vibrato. Um, then we play the same lick again. Up until that slide. Um, uh, but this time we're going to, yeah, it kind of goes a different direction. So we don't actually do the pull off to the uh, the hammer-ons and the pull-off trill thing to the ninth fret. We actually do it to the eighth fret this time. And uh, then we're going to go down and play the eighth fret on the D, tenth fret on the A, then back up, eighth fret on the D, eighth fret on the G, ninth fret on the B, and then, I actually, here, yeah, I want to be playing that with my second finger, because, I mean, you could do this next note with the, your uh, pinky, but it's a bit safer to do it with a heftier, stronger finger. Um, so I'm going to do that with my ring finger. Because we're going to be adding that little tasty um, slide vibrato in. So it's like uh, that second part. So it's kind of flowing the whole thing. So you have a bit of time when you do that little pull-off thing to... Alrighty. So if you want to see the rest of that, guys, you can go to YouTube and it will be uploaded soon. Um, but yeah, 
Morgan is a fantastic guitar teacher. So we're trying to we're trying to offer out some nice licks from the Bloodshot album that he uh, did. Um, so if you and if you need guitar lessons, just hit him up because yes, sir, he, he's he's available, and um, yeah, he can you know he can help you with these licks. But like I say, vibrato does cure Corona. It's true. Yeah, I, I made a bad joke about that. I apologize. I, I don't. You shouldn't apologize. I thought it was hilarious. You know what, <laughs> guys? Like I did a one taker on that one. I was like. You know, I'm not gonna, not gonna do like five takes because sometimes it happens when you're like teaching stuff and you're like, man, did I teach it right? Did I teach the right licks? And you like go back and forth and you end up doing it like ten times. But yeah, but I mean, if you if you were, if you were teaching someone, you know, you can't just be like, wait, I need to do another take. You know, if you're teaching someone anyway, so it's 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 a nice, honest, real lesson. So yes. that will be up soon, guys. So go check it out. There's also another lick from the first song, a really intense sweet pick lick. So if that's your thing, go check it Try out. To balance it out. Yeah. yeah. Some, some nice melodies. There you go. Shred Bros is great. Thanks. A little dude. bit of cross cross promo. Have you got a show yeah, coming we, up? I don't know. We, we have... Uh, I don't know. It was fun. It was fun. Like, it was fun. Let's say it was fun. It might still be fun. Let's see. <laughs> I'm a bit like like it was it was a nice experiment, you know, and and I had fun having guests on and stuff. But uh, I don't know. I like it. I, I like Let us know in the it. chat, guys. I, I think do, I'll do some more. Do you want to see some more Shred Bros or what? Because he he doesn't sound convinced. But I I really enjoy the show. I think it's you know it's good to see some incredible. Can he play the survival intro lead, please? His guitar isn't... Sure, dude. I mean... I can plug it in like one second. Yeah, do it. Do it. Why not? All right. All right. He's oh, gonna... sweet. I can... You know what? I'll give you... Um, It'll be mic sound. Like, I can also give you like direct sound, but it'll... Be nah, it sound. doesn't matter. Um, then I can use... More some, guitar uh, plus. Wash red bros. <laughs> oh, see, shit. Vampiric God. This, see, this is this is other people that want your show, Morgan. See, everyone's watching. Okay, wait. How am I gonna do this? Oh, I, I, I look at that. I just got a I got a trophy for receiving a hundred messages today. With nice. I'm dude. like digitally holding it, guys. You're number one at holding at having a hundred messages. Thank you, guys, oh. for the hundred messages. <laughs> can you actually hear that at all? I can. Yeah, I, I can, can, I can hear my... you. We we can't see your y your body. Yes, I will have to go down, and then the green screen might go away. Ah, uh, sorry. Right. Oh, that's my floor. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, this um, guys? You're bending space and time. So yeah, so uh, g here, take it away, Morgan. Here's the uh, right, here's sure, the sure, intro sure. to Survival Evolved this for you guys awesome. live. Yeah, it's good to do this now because when Survival comes, which is actually the third song uh, of Reanimation, so we I will be doing a lick or a lesson on that, but pr I probably won't pick this lick because I want to pick one of the other crazier solos. Yeah, the, this lick's not actually too hard to get. The timing's a bit weird, though, but yeah, take it away, Morgan, and show people, show people what you got. Um, yeah, so pretty much it is a lick that plays with the third. Uh, it goes between major third and a minor third. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, the first time around you play the lick, uh, and the second time around you play the exact same lick, but you're moving the interval down a half step. So the lick goes like this. And if you noticed, there was one note difference between those two patterns. Um, so you're starting on the ninth fret of the G string and then you play the ninth fret on the D string so you have to do a down stroke and then an up stroke uh, then you're gonna play the seventh fret on the D then you're gonna play the eighth fret and slide into the ninth fret on the G and uh, if you can get a little pinch harmonic going there that would be ideal yeah that gives it the signature sound it's got um, and as well, the next uh, little sliding section as well has that same pinch harmonic. Um, and that's from the 10th fret on the B, and then you slide into the 12th fret. So, slowly. 
And that last note is the 11th fret on the G. Um, so pretty much you just cycle around that lick. And then the third time, uh, you're going to play the 7th fret instead of the 8th fret. Um, and that's just what gives it that interesting sound. You're welcome, Jesse. Because um, it's like I'm following the chord progression and then essentially it like, goes from major to a minor feel. Um, and then if you want to know the note groupings, it's like, uh, or like, you do two times the first shape with the major, then you're going to do four times the shape with uh, the minor third, so the seventh fret instead of the eighth fret, and then you're going to play again two times with the major third, so like back to the original first shape, and then there's a little turnaround at the very end um, to go to the next bar, and it goes over the bar. Yeah, exactly. And uh, essentially, you're going to like land on the one. Um, so you also have to start, you have to cut off one note of the second phrase. So that's what makes it feel a bit like in, like it's going over the bar rhythmically. But actually, it's quite simple. So. Two more of these. Then major. Yeah, and that's the little... That 12th fret on the uh, G will be the down the, zone, of the yeah. next riff. But so it's just like that whole part is the same, but instead of playing the 10th fret on the B and sliding into the 12, you're going to play the 10th fret on the B, then you're going to play a little mini slide. So it's, uh, it's still like the note value of all of the other ones, like a kind of straight eighth note, I guess. Um, and you're going to play the 8th fret and slide directly into the 9th fret. Then the 10th fret on the B, and then the 12th fret on the B as well. Um, and then when you, when you do that, you see I skip that first note of the riff, and you go immediately to the second note, which is that 9th fret on the D. So hopefully but, that... Yeah, there you go, Jesse. Hopefully that helps free. you out. If you guys want to... Yeah want to learn this like you can watch this stream back on any of the platforms that it's on um and you can check out yeah, it'll be on youtube as well yeah youtube or you can click you can click backwards in the past like to the past on youtube so what's up with during the live stream i don't think yeah. you can do that with facebook maybe on, yeah on some of them you can definitely uh what's up with armadillos okay well that that's perfect segue to our next segment um so yeah, we, in 2018, we went on our, I'll just do like a little recap. We went on our first tour of Canada and uh, last week, last Wednesday, we had a little chat. I need to stop messing with my handle things. It's like my fidget at the moment. Sorry, I'll do it with you. Oh, you can't see it, man. I gotta get you the, can, the- You can hear it though. The arm cam, the arm cam. Arm cam. Oh. Wow, um, now anyway. I'm anyway. So relaxed. But yeah, enough of that. Um, so, last last week we spoke about the first section. We uh, ended up in Guelph. And, last gig in Ontario, yeah. Yeah. And we had... Um, so this is, this is part of the tour. Uh, Soul Affliction leads. I'm pretty sure you did a video where you did all the solos on the, uh, on the album, Morgan, no? I didn't do all the solos, but I did do some. Soul uh, Afflictions. I had the, the crazy sweeps. The crazy sweeps are in the... Soul Affliction there. I, I have... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can... I, think I played that whole solo. Yeah, I have that yeah. solo on my, on my YouTube channel. Yeah, so go ch check out Morgan Reed on YouTube. And um, yeah, he, he released a video where it's got a bunch of playthroughs, live playthroughs, actually, one after the other of all of the solos. So that's really, really nice content there. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we, we finished off in Ontario. So this is the craziest, uh, gig distance I've ever experienced in f almost 20 years. So we had, Dude, it was like longer than the whole Japan tour just to get there. Yeah, it was. So we, we finished a gig and we had a day off, but the day off didn't really count for anything because we had a 36 hour journey if i'm not mistaken uh, that's how long it took us i think um we hope to play in america one day man just gotta wait and see um so yeah so yeah 
that journey was intense. Um, that's when we saw the frozen lake, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we had this, we that was that was over in like a tiny town. Yeah, that was like the early on, the van. early on in the uh, in the journey. So, so after we left Ontario, we basically had a plan to get the oil checked. I'm pretty sure, and the tire tires and stuff checked by a mechanic because when you're driving insane distances like that, you have to be safe. Um, it's 101, obviously. Um, our journey to Winnipeg, I can't remember exactly how many kilometers or miles it was, but it had to be... I mean, it's like from the... It's not the total south of Ontario, but Ontario is obviously huge. I don't know if you guys know yeah, how big Ontario it's is, probably but it's bigger than like Britain France or whatever. Yeah, like... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's huge. Massive, massive. So... I mean, it just felt yeah. like we were and in Ontario forever, north. even though we... You, you can know... drive totally north, and then you can start going west. Right? Yeah. So, so it was a it was a long, long drive. Uh, Winnipeg's kind of in the mid country, isn't it? Yep, yeah. It's like it's a, in the, the start of the prairies. It's like the first major city, isn't it? At the start of the prairies, I guess. Um, so yeah. So anyway, we were on the way to Winnipeg, and we stopped off for oil uh, at this place. I mean, it didn't it didn't look like much at the time, um, and then we all got out. I think I might have been asleep. Um, and yeah, so we, we we went over to this lake, and it was just a lake as far as the eye could see, and it was just, a, you know, it was completely frozen. And for me, that's never n not something you've ever I've ever seen because in the UK, if a lake's frozen, you stand on it, you fall straight through it. So, um, so that was incredible. I wish I had actually a picture to show you guys because I did take a picture standing on on the edge of it. And then the APOC guys were like, I don't know if you remember this, Morgan, but they were they like, went all the way out. Yeah, there, they were yeah. like, let's do a photo shoot and like ran. I was like, uh, I turned into like tall mother, just like, no, don't no. go too far. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was so worried. Dude, I didn't even go on. I was like, nah, no, I don't want to die. Yeah, I mean, it was so early <laughs> on in the tour as well. It was like, it's not, it's not a wise thing to do when you're just, just setting off on a journey, but, um, no, I mean, it, it was so frozen that th th they didn't even, you know, come close to falling through, really. And it Did you, you know what happened as well there? Um, because we had, we were getting the, tr the van checked out, we had to take the trailer off, and I just remember Taylor, like, beasting it. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, that was, that was the, the first sign. So, t so Taylor was uh, Apoc's guitarist at the time, and he, he, it was his first ever tour as well, I remember. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah. he was... He was just 18, I think. Yeah, you know? he just turned 18. And uh, I pretty much renamed him Little John because he's like the character from Robin Hood, you know, like massive. And pretty much he just, like we were all trying to figure out logistically how to move this trailer off. And he was like, ah, don't worry about it. And just, you know, picked it up pretty much by himself, a full trailer and just lifted it. It was like mind blowing. But yeah, I mean, we we definitely we definitely use that skill later on on the tour because you know we had parking with the uh, the trailer was hectic sometimes. So if if you know, I remember it'd be like a little off in Vancouver, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vancouver was the one, wasn't it? Like, so we we parked up and uh, the trailer was kind of like diagonal, not completely diagonal, but like not perfectly lined up. And we got like all the guys out, and we were like, "Yeah, let's do this, guys. Let's do this." And uh, Taylor basically just picked up a full trailer by himself and just dragged it to the edge of the road, and we were all just shocked, just like, "What? How are you this strong?" Like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, that's epic. That he uh, helped us with that. I mean, it, was this the same journey with the 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 uh, the Giacomo incident? That was a bit. I feel later, like that was a bit later. It was a few it was days. Like, it was definitely on the, in in Ontario, though. I swear, was it not? No, no. Oh, no was was it, it not? I don't think so. I think it was more like close to Vancouver or whatever. Okay, we definitely. Well, wrong, I can't though. wait to get to wrong. that part. That was really yeah, funny, yeah, yeah. anyway. Giacomo, can you remember? Because you're, you're. I know you're watching. You can always seem to remember these kind of things. Do you remember when the? Uh, the uh, I need a the poop incident, incident happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> so good, but, oh, um, yeah. but yeah, no. Um, we can, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Yeah, so we we had to travel to 
to Winnipeg, like I was saying, and uh, we were stop. We were going to stop off at a, a city called Thunder Bay. It was in Ontario, yeah. Oh, so we, it was just. I'm pretty sure it was just before this moment. So let's just get into that, anyway. So. <laughs> Morgan, take it away. Go on. Oh, man. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to laugh too much. Well, you have, a good, you have a good introduction to Taylor. So, like, he's, like, such a He's a big nice guy. guy he's, know? like... He's, super, he's so nice. Yeah, he's the yeah, nicest. he's big. He's big. He, he's, like, like he's, taller than me and just, you know, a big, strong, strong, strapping lad. Um, But he's super polite as well. Like, as obviously, a lot of Canadians are known for being... Um, Anyways, and, and like uh, Josh mentioned it last uh, episode that the that they're like the suicide doors. So that just means like there's two doors that open like away from each other. On the side, yeah. Only one side of the van. And uh, like they're not very, it's, like it's not very it's much space as down. well. It's pretty far down to get out of the van as well. Like it's not, it's not like. <laughs> yeah, there's no. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's a no bit of distance. Step. Yeah, there could be a, like a little step ladder probably <laughs> if, if you wanted it. So anyway, so. All right. Okay. The other thing we forget to preface before this story begins actually is just how slow Giacomo is in general. Yeah, yeah. He's a bit like like he's just not, mad not, slow not, as at yeah, doing just, stuff. Like yeah, he's he's not in a rush. Let's put it that way. Um, not in a like rush. Like he's fast at base. But most of the time he's kind of like uh, you. You're a relaxed guy, Jack. Let's say that a relaxed, okay, a relaxed, relaxed fella. He's relaxed. Um, okay, and Taylor, like, he really needed to take a job, like, really badly. Um, but we were driving, like, you know when you're on the road for so long and there's nowhere to go? It, w- it was late at night as well. We're talking, like, four in the morning or something. Just to, was just, it that late? Oh, uh, yeah, God. it was, because Giacomo was asleep, pretty much, on his feet. But, yeah. I don't know. I, I might have been in the morning. I'm not actually sure what time of day it was, to be honest. I it, can't remember if it was dark. It was dark. It was 100% dark. Uh, okay, I re- okay, I believe you, I believe you. Um... All right, all right. So, so we're pulling up finally. Like we we were looking for places to stop forever, just so that obviously he doesn't have to go into the woods with the, some toilet paper or whatever. We we may we may have been trolling as well. And we like, were a little bit trolling and, and we like and not I think we were we, when we were dude, we went past because we finally we had to get off the highway to find a place because there was nowhere on the highway. Yeah, and yeah. We like drove past a bunch of shit and then we like <laughs> came back in the other direction towards the highway because we're like oh there's nothing. We'll have to stop at that Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, love, so, I love how I love how Giacomo knows like exactly when this stuff happened. <laughs> it's like a, the worst memory of his life. But yeah, let's carry on. I, I I just had like a really good view from it because I think you I don't know like I was sitting in the back row and and essentially the door is here. Giacomo is sitting beside the door and Taylor is sitting here. Yeah, the other side. And then so he can't he side, can't get out without getting past Giacomo. It's impossible. It's impossible. And and okay, so we finally get. Like we finally stop, and he's like literally about to shit his pants. Yeah, the Taylor. Then, we 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 were. And Jack was like, like he's opening the door, dude. He just starts opening the door, like, <laughs> <laughs> like so slowly, like like literally. I'll give you, you more close up. Like if you're the door, it's like this. It's just like. <laughs> Anyways, and he starts opening the door, and Taylor's like, Jack, I really, I really need to, I really need to go to the bathroom, man. I really need to go. And, and Jack's like. It's fine, no problem. And then just like Taylor, just like he's like, I really need to go. So he kind of like pushes Jack out of the way, and he literally he was so good. Himself out of the van, it was so good, and he fell over. Yeah, he like dived over, fell out. Taylor Taylor literally dove, like trying to get over Jack, and was like, get out of my way. And he fell down, and like his pants were falling down, and like I just. I just remember the moment he fell, like he also farted perfectly exactly <laughs> when he landed. It was just like, just like, oh my goodness me. Oh my god, it was I don't, I don't even care if anyone's finding this entertaining or even watching. This is killing me. Oh goodness, it was so funny. It was so funny. In the so, yeah, like, essentially, Taylor, like, Taylor really dude, needed the it. Taylor really needed to use the restroom, and we, uh, you know, a thing that is commonly done on tours is it people will be made to wait you know it's like their, their resolve will be tested with the with going to the restroom and uh we may have trolled him a bit too long but yeah i mean it, it was like an epic dive it was like a movie when he was just like jack well, i really need to get a jack and there was i i, I swear like I, I remember it vividly like there was no gap between him diving out and like 
he asked once Giacomo was too slow and he was just like I've got to go and just just basically ran through him oh Dude, goodness and then as soon as soon as he landed um he ran into the Timorans <laughs> and he ran straight to the women's bathroom <laughs> <laughs> Because he like he just went to the nearest bathroom like he could not uh, yeah he just to save his life. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, it's I'm glad he did to be honest because that van was tight tight as anything. Uh, but yeah, so so that happened. Um, and then um, so yeah, we carried on to Thunder Bay. Um, and th- I had a basically a solo moment here. This this was quite funny, really. In in hindsight, at the time it wasn't for me, but so, McDonald's. Yeah, so basically we got to McDonald's and uh, I'd been awake uh, s- uh, with the driver, and I I just could not oh, for the man. life of me sleep um, because I was like sat upright like this, and everyone in the back was just like. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so I just decided screw it. I'll 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 get out. We parked up at a McDonald's, and uh, yeah, so I so I got out and I just had like a crisis moment. I was like, I was like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what time it is. And just like looked to the looked to the sky and was just like, what is life? Like in my head. <laughs> and then um, I, yeah, I don't know. I just felt really like i was like really panicky and stuff because i hadn't slept and pretty much went over to the mcdonald's and tried to get in the mcdonald's and it was like it was closed and there was a woman the other side of the door like telling me to go away and stuff and i was just like life could not get any worse right now and then um and then basically the sun started coming up and it was like the most amazing sunrise i'd ever seen maybe because i was in a bit of euphoria from being all like not slept and like tore stress and tired and yeah, that just like snapped me out of it instantly. And I was like, had a tear in my eye looking across Thunder Bay, just like, wow, this is epic. Yeah, sick, and then, and then like five minutes later, McDonald's opened and I was just like, yes, my life was better instantly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was, that was about 12 hours into the drive, probably maybe a little bit more. And we weren't even half overnight, right? Because yeah. we left straight after the show in Guelph. Yeah, and we weren't even halfway there, so I think we I think we stopped for like three or four hours though to let everyone who was going to drive get some rest, and then then we cracked on really, and it was just more of Ontario, wasn't it, for a hell of a long time? Ontario just it seemed to go on forever. Nice, oh yeah, don't get me wrong. There's the, a lot of incredible, like you, you could you know nice you, scenery nice scenery you could see all like uh we saw we saw a bit of wildlife there i think but that we saw more in british columbia i'd say but so yeah so we so we just we just cracked on um did, did it become desert before we got to winnipeg or is that post winnipeg mm, nah, no nah, it's that's after yeah yeah so uh, but winnipeg i remember getting there and and we were like parking our van and it's it's well, kind of known for being a bit sketchy in some areas and stuff. Well, didn't like, we, we we arrived like four hours before loading or something <laughs> after driving so solidly? Much. Maybe, maybe. Like, and we just ha- we hung out with some guys and they they were they were awesome. They were very um, welcoming, true. let's say. True, true, true. Um, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then after that we uh, yeah we jumped we jumped down to the venue. That, oh yeah, Winnipeg. Winnipeg, okay. That's where so, the guys who, who saw the van know, and they were like, "So, where are you guys like gonna be staying later?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like I am um, gonna be parked. I'm not gonna be telling you, my friend. I mean, I I had high hopes for Winnipeg because like a couple of my heroes, wrestling heroes, come from Winnipeg, and I was like, "Yeah, so you know, I've had it all my life." Um, and then I got there, and it was a bit like. Okay, so this is this is Winnipeg. <laughs> I mean, it was a bit of a weird gig, to be, be honest. But the venue was really nice, and uh, the sound was really cool. So that was that was decent. We we had some decent support bands as well on that show. But after, I mean, after that sort of journey, you're just trying to sort of survive, really. Like you know, because we hadn't had a proper sleep, and we had to play the show. I can't remember if we had to carry on driving afterwards or not. I mean, 
just so you know, guys, the the long drives and stuff, uh, we're not complaining about that. That is just the nature of Canada. Chris Jericho, yeah, he's the GOAT. Um, yeah, it's just the nature of Canada. So if you do a full Canada tour without cutting down into the US, you have to go around Ontario like we did. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was... Uh, that was a pretty pretty nice gig. I I remember we had a this this is important guys actually. So there was a press guy there. Um and I'm not I'm not I'm not saying this going to say I'm just going to disclaim this. I'm not trying to shame the guy or whatever. But um yeah, so this press guy we had, he turned up for the show and he was on the press list and uh he turned up he was pretty much like the clothes he was wearing were covered in food and stuff and he uh he basically yeah th i mean this is pretty much how not to treat a band if they're visiting your local area and you're d you're getting into the show for free on press the guy was really like intense and just like basically just like s standing around us wasn't he? He, he the guys were all eating in a restaurant and he just walked in and was just like standing next to them and being really like intense and pretty much just smelled like he hadn't washed his clothes in days um and in the end I, I i just had to like i had to keep running away from the guy <laughs> this is my main memory of winnipeg I don't, this is kind of sad really so but yeah so if, if you are getting into a gig as a guest guys and you're reviewing the bands or whatever or interviewing just try and be a bit respectful of their space and stuff and Try and have a like have a come come to work dressed well, you know. Come to work clean. No one wants to smell smell you whilst you're asking them questions. Because <laughs> it's not after after that long journey, it wasn't it wasn't a good time. But I will I say, I, that. I remember getting Chinese food though. Yeah, I, the Chinese food next door was was pretty delicious. I actually really liked the look of the venue as well. It was like it was the first sort of venue we'd played where. It wasn't as familiar to me. It looked, it looked more like what I imagine uh, USA. I mean, I've been to the USA, so it looks more like the USA did to me. The Ontario and stuff was more familiar, you know. It felt a bit, kind of reminded me of home a bit, in a way. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just, but yeah. So Winnipeg, that was a a decent gig. Um, and then we had another drive after that. Where, what was the next gig after that? Was it Kelowna, or was it? No, Saskatoon or. Oh yeah, so we went through the prairies. So Saskatoon, yeah, that was uh, that was also an interesting one. So Saskatoon's in the middle of the desert. Um, I remember the support band of that gig was super enthusiastic. Do you remember him? the uh the axel rose oh, yeah. guy <laughs> so we're playing sick, dude. yeah he was i mean he, he got me he got me going like so saskatoon's in the middle middle of nowhere pretty much um and we'd you know th this is our first headlining tour so some of the shows weren't as busy as hoped regina regina yeah i'm not sure which one was first regina or saskatoon Oh, it was Regina first. Ah, uh, my bad. Well, Regina was super cool. We were hosted by some lovely folks there. And the support band also, they were they were a real pleasure to hang out with. Um, we had a sick crowd there. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was... Uh, that was that, that was an insane... Regina is an insane city as well because it's just... That is pretty much in the middle of the desert, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah I did, yeah, I did Aaron, but uh, that, yeah, I got confused because you were also at Saskatoon, weren't you, my friend? Um, but yeah, so that gig was great. Um, the support band, what was the support band, Giacomo, Giacomo and the Chatamo? Because they were really cool guys, and I, I feel bad that I, because we play with so many bands, guys, it's hard to keep. Uh, you know, I can't even really remember my own song names, let alone other bands. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, the, we were treated really nicely there. That was quite a bizarre sort of uh, city, though, because it's just in the middle of the desert. And then it was kind of 
not very not very populated i wouldn't say i, I had a nice walk it around was very it was like super gridded yeah exactly like, yeah it was like new york city yes yeah, but everything was like yeah it, small. yeah that that, that was one space. good thing because i actually needed some supplies and it was so easy to find everything because it was just like true i went to the i walked to the music store or whatever mm. and i got earplugs bulgarian yeah Oh, that, yeah. that sounds familiar. Yeah, no, they were they were stand up dudes. I think I I think I still interact with some of the uh, some of the fans from that show as well. So, um, we stayed with the promoters that as well. Was a really good gig. We stayed with the promoters and they had really epic animals. I don't know if you remember they they had that house do, which yeah. had the nice basement and stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's always nice when when prom you get put up with the promoters because you you know you do. You do business and do the uh, do the show, and then yeah, you just get to hang out with them if they if 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 they've got a nice place and stuff. And it's always nice to be comfortable straight after a show, you know, instead of having to drive on or you know go find a hotel. Just knowing that you got a nice, comfortable space with cute animals to rest. Because I, I I believe Saskatoon wasn't overly far. Yeah, Karen and Landon. That's no. it. Three, three hours or something? Yeah, that was, I think that was the first reasonable night's sleep we had. So. Do you remember playing with Decapitated in Belfast? Yeah, I do remember playing that because I had, uh, I had James's drum, like, uh, the back of his cymbal arm up my butt for the whole gig. <laughs> that was when, that was, James set up and we were all set up to, like, get started and James was like that would be alright won't it and I looked down at the floor and I couldn't even fit my shoe between the bass drum and the monitor <laughs> but yeah no I, I, honestly I love that venue we've played in there a bunch of times was that our first gig that was yeah. in last January with DCAP yeah was it our first gig though okay. nah um, I think it, it was it was it? but it wasn't meant to be do you remember in Sheffield we got canned just before was that, that. Before? I thought that was after, dude. Hmm. Didn't we do like? No, because the, 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 the last show. No, no, it was. Uh, it was Sheffield, then the two Irish shows, and then back to the festival in Birmingham. Oh yeah, true, true, true. For the Sunday. That was cool. But yeah, I do remember that show. It was great. It's always great to go to Belfast. Our label is run out of Belfast that we we release reanimation on so it's always good to see Penny a bud yeah the, the stage was tiny uh, um sometimes that's a good thing though if the if the equipment's good you know if you can hear yourself well it's like it's, it's decent <coughs> but yeah so so we uh, stayed with Landon um and then we, head, we, head, we headed off to Saskatoon where we also hung out with our man Aaron in the chat. He's, I actually need to make him moderator on uh, my channel because he, he kindly offered to take that role. Um, but yeah, Aaron's, Aaron's become a really good friend of mine, guys. He, he, was, just a, he was just a fan. Just a fan to me before. I didn't. I didn't really. I'd never met him before. I spoke to him a little bit online, but um, yeah, we met on those shows, and since then, you know, we've been staying in touch. He's very talented. It, it's good. If you've ever seen Aborted live, um, he actually did a lot of their stage stuff. All of the uh, all of the kind of like prosthetics and the stuff like that. So. Very talented. Super awesome. Sculptor, Super, yeah. Yeah, Maybe. so hopefully we'll get... You should, should follow him on Instagram, dude. Yeah. This stuff is so... For yeah, sure. Super Aaron, great. tell us what your uh, your Instagram handle is so people can go check out your your awesome sculpting. Like I said... He, Aaron SVS with two A's. There you go. As, as his name. But yeah, he's... He doesn't have autofocus function on. He's a very, he's a very talented, very talented man. So, um, nice. 
All right, you should be a mod now, Aaron. I don't know if that if that worked. But uh, I just quickly quickly do that. So yeah, so th that was the last of the Prairies gigs, really, wasn't it? The Saskatoon show. Let's talk about that support band actually, because that was really funny. Um, so yeah, so we we were we were pretty tired, and we got to Saskatoon, and it was it was a really cool, like it, quite cool, sort of games bar, I guess is the best way to put it. There was a pizza place also there. I remember. Yeah, next door. Yeah, good. but they had like pinball machines and like you know. Video we games, we like poker. we played the poker. Machine yeah, the poker well. machine and like uh, Time Crisis or something like House of the Dead, one of those, one of the generic gun gun games. Um, but yeah, I mean the the crowd early on in the show was pretty pretty slim. It was an early door show. More people turned up actually as time went on. Um, but yeah, so so the first band came on and they were like kind of like. I don't know. It was kind of like just like heavy metal, bit death metal-y, kind of metal stuff. And uh, the singer, like, they sound checked, just pretty, pretty nonchalant, pretty relaxed, you know, standard, standard support band. And then uh, as soon as they started, oh, th there you go. Well, this, this I didn't know. But um, I don't know about that, yeah. Um, but the guy was rampaging around. But yeah, so so he start, they started playing and he was just like, All right, guys, let's do this. And he had like a wireless mic and stuff and he was doing like uh, air kicks. Like he was jumping up and going like that and stuff. And uh, yeah, doing I mean... Like we proper hair metal. Yeah, band, like. uh, th but they weren't. They weren't a hair metal band at all. That was what was weird. It was like sort of heavy <laughs> riffs. Like, dun, 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 dun. like kind of like thrashy, I guess. And then he was there, just Axel Rose in it, and running around the venue and like grabbing, you know, like holding on to us and being like, "How you doing?" and all this stuff. I don't know. For me, it just it it, it made my I day. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, I wasn't like super stoked as to what he, how he was singing and stuff or anything like that. But just his energy and stuff made me, you know, the enthusiasm really like made me feel like, all right. Tonight I'm gonna have fun and put on a good show, and I don't know. It was, it, it was kind of it was kind of infectious. That night as well, I yeah, it, it, was, it, was it, night, it was just a fun show. Yeah, yeah, it was just like I, I I don't know. It just goes to show if you can have charisma and be full of energy, then it can really transfer to the crowd. You know, regardless of how how you're sounding on stage. But yeah, him being intoxicated would make a lot of sense. But but uh, <laughs> let's not, let's not uh, divulge too much into that. that. No, no we're, we're not, not condoning, we're not condoning at all. No, um, stay inside <laughs> and all that. But yeah. So yeah, that night we had a bit of a predicament. Dude, as well. it was super hot. We yeah, it was mention that it was insanely hot all of a sudden. We were like just coming from snow the whole time. Yeah, exactly. We in the prairies and it was like 25. Like I, I literally played the show shirtless. I remember. I was yeah, no, we we were all boiling exactly. <laughs> so that's that's another thing, guys. Just so you can kind of gauge it, we travelled so far that the weather had shifted. Like it was, it was absolutely insane, and it was. Uh, yeah, no, I mean it was really hot in in um, in Regina as well because that was like deserty, and I remember we started all getting like, you know, desert throat from all the sa all the dust and stuff. It was like yeah, it was it was like going into a different world. It was quite bizarre, but um, yeah. So after oh, this, dude, we drove. We were driving. You and I. I remember. Is this okay. after Saskatoon? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah, I just got one more little story about Saskatoon. Um, after that, our buddy Aaron. You know, sometimes on tour, stuff happens, and you you you're not able to get a place to stay. So. I've been on the road for so long that I'll pretty much ask anyone, <laughs> you know, if we need it, if we need, if we need a place to stay, I'll ask any fans at the show and try and gauge and find somewhere safe for us to stay. So we are, so I asked Aaron, cause obviously we'd seen him the day before and, uh, bless him. He, uh, he managed to get, he, he wasn't even local and he managed to get his, his, his friend's mother to open up her basement 
and cover it in beds for us. Um, and didn't even, like, basically didn't even, uh, they couldn't be around, so they didn't interact with us at all. I don't know if you remember this. It was like, they gave yeah, us yeah. the keys. These people that didn't, you know, th th obviously Aaron knew us and knew that we weren't crazy. Um, <laughs> so so yeah so so this this lovely lovely lady just let us stay stay in her house and it was so comfortable, was like the most comfortable yeah was gonna say, was it was there, incredible like, the time we had yeah we had like a slumber cool. party set up just waiting for us when we got in and you know and the, 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 that's the kindness of strangers right there um obviously they weren't even at the gig or anything uh, but speaking to Aaron, apparently she uh, she still she still remembers that, and uh, it's one of her one of her favoured moments. Um, putting up a, a metal band from all all around the world. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, thanks for that, Aaron. I mean, this is another reason why you became a good friend to me. Yeah, she still asks how we are. You know, it made her life. <laughs> <laughs> that's <f> <laughs> well nice. we are we are we are nice boys but not that nice um so yeah armadillos yeah dude we were just driving down the road right so Mor just so you know morgan was actually helping drive as well because he's he's an epic trooper you know we we weren't expected to drive but if we can you know may as well may as well help out so yeah so yeah, so I think before that I was pretty ill, so I wasn't driving that much. But then I, I was already feeling better, so we had we had By a pretty we, we had a pretty long drive ahead of us, if I remember. Like definitely, it was like thirteen hours or something. Yeah, something like, ridiculous. <laughs> In one day or whatever. So, so just so you guys know, like these long drives, when this this drive in particular was a, a crazy one for me because you're pretty much driving straight the whole way. And if you look to your you look to your right, it's just flat. You cannot see any hills. You cannot see anything at all. You look to your left; it's just flat as far as the eye can see. And for me, you know, living on a small island in England, there's stuff everywhere, you know, and there's everywhere's hilly and and just to just to be able to look out either side of the road. To an area which is probably bigger than my country that I come from, and it's just completely flat, it was just mind blowing to me. It was like a, I don't know, I wouldn't say like a culture shock, but it was just like a, a realization as to how small, you know, Britain is compared to. I mean, you know, Canada changed changed my life honestly, like just for the size of it, because. No journey seem long now. I can sit in a car for six hours and it doesn't feel like anything, just because, just because of these straight roads. But yeah, so we're so we're we're going straight for hours on end, just chatting, chatting away, and then uh, lo and behold, you take away Morgan. What what, what did you see? <laughs> I mean, we just saw like just a little tiny armadillo walking across in front of us, and I remember being like afraid we were gonna hit it. Yeah. Like, Oh my god, that's an armadillo! Like nobody fucking believed us. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even. I'm not sure if anyone else saw it. So yeah, so the sun, the sun caught its back as well. So at first, I was like, I didn't have any idea what it was. It was like just this big black, I don't know, marsupial-looking creature. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so so we, uh, you didn't have to swerve, I don't think. Or well, maybe you had to no, slow no, down no. for it though. I, think but... I slowed down a bit. Yeah, I remember speeding a little bit on that. But yeah, so as well. <laughs> so incredible. We saw. Uh, I mean, none of the guys knew. I mean, you didn't know that they were from Canada, right? Or they were in Canada. I, I think I. I don't know if I had heard about it, but because I knew it was like desert, I was kind of yeah. Like, I was saying. I think I was saying that they were there, and other people were like, "No way, it's not." It's not, yeah, it's, live up here whatever. exactly yeah yeah I don't know. but i mean yeah like we looked into it and it turns out they had migrated from the midwest um of america the usa and gone up to canada but um yeah so no one no one believed us we that was like our story of the tour 
that we saw an armadillo on the road because obviously the i was really up interested in seeing as much wildlife as possible because obviously there's a lot of iconic wildlife from canada but armadillo sadly was not one <laughs> one of the things so yeah we cracked on morgan i think you drove for like 10 12 hours that day didn't yeah, you or something pretty, mad i think it was hectic because I don't know, I just remember being super tired, but we only got to the gig, like, a couple hours before the gig. Or, like, it had already started or something. Like, it was just a ridiculous drive. Yeah. Pretty much. I don't know, like, we got to Edmonton. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait. No, 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 We got there quite at a decent time. Yeah, actually. Edmonton I remember was... remember actually walking to a mall. Yeah, we, I, I remember we had to leave. We, you know, we had the nicest abode that we had had but we had to leave at like eight in the morning or seven in the morning or something crazy but aaron came and saw us off i remember that remember that fondly but yeah so we drove we were driving on our way to edmonton and almost ran over an armadillo which is the tagline for this whole thing that was kind of a sorry that the story is the, the clickbait the we clickbait like, oh i'm trying new things okay i'm trying to get more people in so i thought a picture of an armad baby armadillo and just the word armadillo is funny so um thank, thanks mark for the uh, for coming out and checking us out in the show um turnouts do not matter as long as everyone has a good time we're happy you know but obviously the better turnouts better but you know we're not going to complain if, if if as long as there's someone watching us we'll shred and we'll do our best so yeah, Edmonton. Edmonton was amazing. To be honest, that was one oh, of my favorite. Just, just the whole the place was incredible. So, is, isn't it like it's like a oil field city? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a relative. It's quite a big city, really. But um, it is close to obviously the. Because when we were driving in, oil. it felt it kind of felt like uh, like we were in a desert version of Blade Runner or something. It was pretty cool. Like um, it was super industrial, but then you get into the you get into the actual city part, and it was it was really beautiful there. Like it's like a big valley, isn't it? Is it a valley? Well, there is a valley in it near the venue, so. um, and it's in the middle. It, it is in the middle of the desert. It's stark there. It's like real, real barren. Um, but I mean, yeah, you're so getting, it's, you're kind of getting closer to the Rockies in a way still like it's not too far but it's definitely I mean it's the prairies yeah there's just know. one more city between wasn't there between yeah, the Rockies yeah, yeah. and um uh, but yeah so, so th that was a really nice gig we were actually playing we were actually playing after another gig before us downstairs of some like pop rock band that were really big so the venue was like full of like teenage girls and stuff <laughs> and I was like damn this is gonna be a great gig and then it's like we walk out the front and we see the nightliner and stuff and we're like oh oh they're not coming for us but but yeah but so so but late gigs Dude, can, can often turn out good, really good though. yeah it was killer i think it was a weekend show as well it was like a friday night and um yeah it was just packed out i think the doors opened at 11 after everyone had cleared out of the other show um but you know that that was a really crazy city as well it, i don't know we the malls and stuff were really like Felt like a really rich place to be. I don't know. It felt like I was in like Dubai or something because it was all like super nice air conditioned malls and it was all like high end shops and you know high rise glass buildings and stuff. It was it was cool. I remember doing. We went into one mall and I was doing like a doing my uh, my throat singing because it had a like a hundred foot ceiling and it was just so epic. <laughs> that was that was one of my sure, favorite I, memories I from that. I think I went to hang out with some of the APOC guys when we went to the mall. And I got a pair of shoes. I remember that. Yeah, I, I hung out in the park and loads of the locals were uh, trying to hang out with me and I was a bit scared, but it was okay. It was it was quite... It was, we it was did, quite... I did walk through a pretty sketchy area as well. I think every... I swear to God, every oh. in Canada has some sketchy-ass area. And, and do you remember the massive hares in Edmonton? The rabbits. The huge rabbits. I don't remember that. So, so we arrived and we parked up and honestly, there was rabbits that were like this big, just walking around yeah. wild ones. And I, I had no idea what was going on. It was, it was actually, it was actually ridiculously cute. It was like I'd walked into the Easter bunny's lair or something. 
But yeah, no, that gig was great. I remember we had some nice circle pits and all that sort of stuff going on. That gig was really sick, yeah. Um, and, really and then we'll, we'll talk about the last show before we get to the... Wait, what was the next show after that? Or was that the last show before the Rockies? I'm pretty sure we went to the Rockies after that. Edmonton, we might have gone... I think we went all the way to Vancouver. And then on the way back, we had two shows. Like... Um, Nelson, and then, or maybe we had, do we have one other show in between? But we definitely had Nelson and Calgary at the end. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good time to wrap up, basically. So, pretty much after that show, we headed west uh, to Vancouver. And Vancouver was a killer time, so... And seeing all the Rockies for the first time was amazing as well. So, I'll, what I'll try and do... For the next time we talk about it is I'll, I'll I'll try and get some photos that I can put up the screen to give you guys a bit more of a visual of like the Rockies and stuff because we took some cool photos in the morning I remember and I, I like some crazy stuff happened there like a golden eagle flying next to the van when we were just driving along you know it's, that was surreal to see we saw two just dr flying along next to us and I was like oh my god they're like the rarest thing in the world and it's like no they're common here <laughs> they own this they own this place but yeah so um that pretty much wraps up for this part like like we said before canada is an epic st story so it's probably going to take two more episodes to finish it off hopefully not but may maybe maybe we can we can squeeze it all into the next one um but yeah thanks thanks a lot morgan for coming on the show again man no it's always good um I might play another song to to uh, end proceedings. Anyone got any questions for us real quick before we go? We're happy to take questions. I can see all your questions on, on my screen now. So if there's anyone's got anything, give you a few. There's about a small delay, so I'll give you guys a, a minute or two there whilst I grab my guitar. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um... The next show is on Friday. It's my birthday show. Like I was saying, I'm going to be playing some Forlorn World stuff for the first time for you guys. And yeah, I've got Nick from Equipoise coming on, and uh, they they had a really sick. they had a really successful debut album. So I'm going to chat with him and try and get some insight into you know how they went about with that process. But yeah, if you it, Nam, if, dude, it's a really nice guy. Yeah. That's, I'm really jealous of Nam. I will get there one day. Um, so yeah, guys, if you've got any questions, just uh, just ask them uh, whilst I'm playing the song and I'll try and answer them after, after I've played. Morgan, if you want to stick around, you can. If you need to go, feel free. Love you, bro. Gonna and peace out, I think. Yeah, no worries, man. Goodbye, I'm missing my I'm missing my Morgan, but I get to to get to chat with him on this weekly, and we're going to be playing, try and to play more games and socialize. But uh, my yeah, system dude. wasn't really working for that the other day, so we're going to switch it up and it try and get something we can better. Try going and play on. games and talk at the same time. It's sometimes hard, but mm. if we don't care about losing, then it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, cheers, Better Morgan. Play. Yeah, later. Thanks again. Uh, you can check out his lick of the week, by the way, on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I got and get guitar lessons because you need to learn and Morgan's the man to learn from because he, he can pretty much play anything so thanks bro I'll Don't see you Peace, see you again mate alright guys so I think as I played a song from album 1 and 2 or album 2 and 3 I'm gonna kick off with I'm just gonna play Godless because why not? Here we go.
All right, guys, that was Godless from our self-titled debut album. So that just about wraps up the show today for today, guys. If anyone's got anything they want to ask me, now's the time. Sorry, it really felt like ripping. Ripping. I, I love the sound that I've managed to create for the streams. Any feedback on the stuff? Just let me know. Um, I miss shows too, Beard. Beard's my number one. He, he was my first subscriber, guys. So thanks for the support, bro. Still need to give you a little uh, lesson for, for being my first. Um, but I appreciate you so much. See if I can play the the first part. There you go. Just for you, Majestic. So, so yeah, thanks guys. Pretty much done for the day. Um, I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Come hang out on Friday. We've got another cooking segment and more. The time, I'm, I'm hoping to do it at 8 p.m. in my normal time. So, yeah, thanks again, guys. Thanks for coming and checking me out. Um, stay safe and I'll see you all next time. Peace, guys.